Your state of Adama is also enmeshed in this crisis. Is there anything that sets the situation in Adama, you know, apart from that of Benue? It's the same. Herders, farmers, like I've told you, the existing cattle rules. If you go, it has been gazetted. It's in the gazette, in our laws. It is in our laws. We have not repealed them. There are cattle rules. Most of these cattle rules have been overtaken by farmlands and because of population growth. And the government has failed in its, in its uh, responsibility to really keep to these rules. These rules we are created since the colonial times. It has not been reviewed. They have been become inadequate for the mass expansion and movement of fathers, both within and from outside this country. Would bringing back these roots help in any in solving this situation, in your opinion? It will mitigate. But the most important thing is to have correct senses of who is coming with herds of cattle and who are rearing. Like if you go to Gembu, for instance, there are, it's, it's like we can call it colonies of herdsmen. They have most of our big men here in Nigeria have their cattle in Gembu, for example. They have demarcated for themselves whether they acquired through government or they bought. They have their cattle there running into thousands. They don't you know, wonder about like those cattle nomadic is coming from outside this country. So if we can have colonies or ranches, so to speak, which must be done in proper conjunction with the federal government, I think we will be addressing the issues properly, not this blame game. In light of the submission so far, what is your assessment of the APC government thus far under President Muhammad Buhari? Yes, we are in the third year of the administration, and the administration is grappling with a lot of challenges. Boko Haram in the Northeast, although it has been uh, dissipated, but we still have attacks on soft targets. We still have suicide bombers. We have not completely routed the Boko Haram. Now the Fulani has made and farmers problems in Adama, in Benue, in, uh, even in Zamfara. So the, the, the nation appears to be under siege by various insecurity challenges, security challenges. The government is trying its best, but to us, when these deaths happen almost on daily basis, the best is not good enough. All hands must be on deck. Nigerians should not surrender security issues only to government agencies. We must all be our security agents by ourselves. Report suspicious movements. Like they say, when you see something, say something. You don't say, oh, I'm not in government, it doesn't disturb, but I'm not part of. It's wrong. This is our country. This country belongs to all of us. It does not belong to Buhari alone. Buhari is one out of 180 million that God and Nigerians have given him the leadership. We must all rally down and help him, not to be blaming him. Some people are making fortunes out of these security challenges, political fortunes. It's wrong, very wrong, condemnable. The steps taken so far by the by, by governments at, at both levels, both say Benue State government, for instance, and the federal government, there are certain steps that have been taken to curtail this issue. Do you think there are steps in the right direction? Do you think they will bring the desired result? We hope and pray they bring the desired result. But like I've told you, it should be two-way traffic. You should not say, oh, it's the Fulani husband that are at fault. Oh, the Binwe farmers are at fault. No, we should stop the blame game as leaders. We should act as leaders that we are. Everybody in Binwe, whether you are Fulani, Tiv, Idoma, Hausa, Ibo, you are all living in Binwe, and it is the responsibility of the governor to take care of your security and of your lives and property. Every life is so precious. Every life is important. Like I said, no state can solve this problem 
on individual state basis. It must be a holistic approach involving the federal government, which must play more than 70%. You, you see, policemen are killed, soldiers are killed. And these others, like I said, they are not, some of them, most of them are coming into this country, like I said, because of the recession of the lake chart. Coupled with the... Coupled with the insurgencies in all the other areas. In the northeast, people are moving with their hands down south. And when you move, any farmland you, you come across, you just walk over and, and it's gone. So either way, Nigeria as a country is a loser. Either way. So we must approach this problem holistically. All the 36 states of the federation with the federal government must be on the same page. Must be on the same page. Anything short of that, we are just scratching the problem. Would you, would you lay some of this blame at the doorstep of leadership? Because, for instance, a day after a meeting was held, an expanded security meeting by agents of the federal government and some state governments where this crisis, you know, perpetuate, we saw this same blame game you're talking about between governors trading blames as to where the militias are and where they are not. In the first place, the existence of militia in your state. You as a governor cannot claim ignorance. And if you do claim ignorance, that, then you are not fit to rule. Then you are not fit to govern. Governance goes with responsibilities. And you must have capacity. The existence of militia, even in your state, you know, the, the, you must be called to question. If, if, you if, must explain. Why do you need militia in your state? Why do you arm them? We have laws in this country, for God's sake. Our laws does not empower anybody to be carrying arms, sophisticated arms, AK-47, and what have you. Even the double barrel, you must have license for that. But in, a, in this country, almost everybody is, has arm. Once you have the money, you go and buy it, where only God knows. And I hear that some governors even arm these militias, they buy them guns. And now the hallmark of a vibrant democracy is the ability to provide credible opposition. Now we'll be looking at the PDP as a party in Nigeria and trace the reconciliation efforts thus far and see how that is coming on. I guess we'll be having opinion on those issues when we return. Stay with us.